This video is brought to you by Picmonic. Use the link in the description to try Picmonic for free. Welcome back to my microbiology playlist and to my Picmonic playlist as well. Today is yet another microbiology video in which we'll discuss chlamydia, rickettsia, and mycoplasma. Both of these three bacteria are anatomically gram-negative, but clinically, in reality, they do not stain well with gram stain. Chlamydia can cause conjunctivitis, pneumonia, UTI, STI, PID, and more. Rickettsia can lead to typhus and Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and mycoplasma can cause pneumonia as well. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. You can find this video in my Picmonic playlist as well as in my microbiology playlist. We had many previous videos in this microbiology playlist. These are the topics discussed in video 1, these are the ones discussed in the second video, and so on and so forth. And here are videos 5 through 11. The last video was about these pyrochetes, it was a very important topic. As for today, it's time for chlamydia, rickettsia, and mycoplasma. All of them are called atypical bacteria. They are anatomically gram-negative, but they do not stain well with gram stain. What is microbiology? Ology means the study of bio means life, micro means small. So it's the study of small life. Isn't that cute? Microbes are divided into bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites, which means that microbiology will be divided into bacteriology, fungology, or mycology, virology, and parasitology. Today we're talking about bacteria. We can divide bacteria into gram-positive and gram-negative by using the gram stain. If you appear purple, you're gram-positive. If you appear pink, you're gram-negative. Each one is subdivided into cocci, which are spherical in shape, and rods, which look like this, like a rod. The same thing applies for gram-negatives. Since today we're talking about gram-negatives or anatomically gram-negative bacteria, let's classify the gram-negatives. Cocci and rods. The cocci could be diplococci, meaning a double coccus, or coccobacillus, which means between a coccus and a bacillus. It's not completely spherical and it's not completely elongated either. It's kind of in between. It's oval shape. As for the rods, we divide them into bacilli, which are straight rods and curved rods. If I am a diplococcus, then the next question is, can I ferment maltose or not? If I can ferment this sugar, then I am maltose fermenter, such as Neisseria meningitidis, which causes bacterial meningitis, septic meningitis. But if I am not a maltose fermenter, then I could be Neisseria gonorrhea or Moraxella cateralis. Neisseria gonorrhea causes gonorrhea, one of the famous sexually transmitted infections. Today we're talking about chlamydia, which also causes sexually transmitted infections. Neisseria can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. Chlamydia can also lead to pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID. Neisseria gonorrhea can lead to neonatal conjunctivitis, and so can chlamydia. As for the gram-negative uh, coccobacilli, they are the Haemophilus influenzae, Bordetella pertussis, Pastorella, Brucella, and Francisella. We have talked about all of these before in previous videos in this Picmonic playlist. Gram-negative rods, bacilli and curved rods. The bacilli include Legionella. And the curved rods are the famous H. pylori bacteria. And again, we have talked about these before. More bacilli, E. coli and Klebsiella. More curved rods, Campylobacter jejuni and Vibrio cholera. How do I know whether I can ferment lactose or not? We use McConkie agar. If I produce pink colonies on McConkie, then I am a lactose fermenter. But if I produce white colonies, I am not a lactose fermenter. So if I am a gram-negative rod, straight bacillus, then the next question is, lactose fermenter or not? Yes, I am pink on McConkie. The next question is, are you a slow fermenter or a fast fermenter? And if the answer is no, because I produce white colonies on McConkie, then the next question is, are you oxidase positive or oxidase negative? If you are oxidase negative, the next question is, can you produce hydrogen sulfide or no? And we talked about all of that before. Then we talked about spirochetes. They are anatomically gram-negative, but they do not stain well with gram stain. And the spirochetes include Trypanema, Leptospira, and Borrelia, causing syphilis, leptospirosis, and Lyme disease, respectively. Today, we have more atypical organisms. What do you mean? I mean, these bacteria are anatomically gram-negative. 
But when we actually stained them with gram stain, they did not stain with gram at all. So they are anatomically gram negative, but in reality, we need another technique to diagnose them and confirm their presence. These include chlamydia, rickettsia, and mycoplasma. If you want an animated chart that will help you classify all of these bacteria, Picmonic has one. Just click on the link in the description box. Let's start by talking about the diseases caused by chlamydia. Chlamydia is illustrated by the chlamydia clam, about to go on the worst date of her life. This STI is the most commonly reported STI in the U.S., and is caused by the gram-negative bacterium Chlamydia trachomatis, shown by her date, the other Chlamydia clam in his Tacoma truck. Chlamydia is often referred to as a silent disease because many patients may be asymptomatic, shown by the thumbs up and clam saying, call me maybe. They head to a concert where her inappropriate date spews urine and flames all over the stage, representing dysuria or painful urination as a symptom of chlamydia this sets the artist E. Pick Dead Mouse on fire, signifying epididymitis as another symptom, which includes unilateral scrotal pain, swelling, tenderness, and fever. Patients may also notice abnormal vaginal or penile discharge, shown by the discharge the clam spits all over her date as he tries to get his way with some painful sex with his disc piranha, signifying dyspareunia or painful intercourse as the last symptom listed. To avoid complications from chlamydial infection, treatment should not be delayed. Antibiotics given include doxycycline, the doxun cycling the clam calls to pick her up from this horrible date, or azithromycin, the zipper mice, who also refuse to unzip for this clammy fellow. Patients should be educated to have no intercourse for one week after treatment, shown by the no sign intercourse pointed to by the one wand on the week calendar. It is also important to notify and treat partners, shown by treating of all their partners. So to review, chlamydia is caused by the bacterium Chlamydia trachomatis. Patients may be asymptomatic, but others may present with dysuria, epididymitis, abnormal discharge, and dyspareunia. Interventions include antibiotics, such as doxycycline or azithromycin. Patients should have no intercourse for one week and should notify partners to be treated. Chlamydia trachomatis, the clam on a truck, could be asymptomatic, thumbs up, or can lead to dysuria, urethritis, epididymitis, discharge, and dyspareunia. How do we treat it? Doxycycline, the cycling dog, azithromycin, the zipper mice, and you need to treat both partners. Next, let's talk about the characteristics of chlamydia bacteria. In this picmonic, we describe the characteristics of the bacteria in the genus Chlamydia, portrayed as the Chlamydia clam. All Chlamydia species are obligate intracellular bacteria that cannot make ATP, shown as the empty ATP battery pack. The bacterial life cycle begins with an elementary body, which infects a cell, represented by the elephants chasing and infecting others. Classically, chlamydia invade and become intraepithelial, as epithelial cells are their main target, shown as the epithelial cell. Once inside, chlamydial bacteria form reticulate bodies, which replicate, depicted by the replicating rats. Now, when learning how to diagnose these infections, first remember that the chlamydia cell wall lacks muramic acid, illustrated by the mirror and acidic lemon on a no sign. Therefore, it does not stain with gram stain, but rather it can be visualized with a Giemsa stain, the gems. Because the reticulate bodies in this infection create cytoplasmic inclusions within the infected epithelial cells, we see inclusion bodies on microscopy as well, portrayed by the ink blots. Treatment for chlamydial infections starts with azithromycin, the zipper mice, and this is favorable because it is a one-time treatment. Another effective antibiotic is doxycycline, the doxin cycling. So in brief, let's review the characteristics of chlamydia. These bacteria cannot make ATP, and infection begins with an elementary body. Once they infect and gain intraepithelial entry, they form a reticulate body, which replicates. When diagnosing chlamydia, their bacterial cell wall lacks muramic acid, and they are best visualized using a Giemsa stain. Once stained, we are able to see inclusion bodies within epithelial cells. Treatment for chlamydial infections begins with azithromycin, and doxycycline is another effective antibiotic. Chlamydia cannot make its own ATP. That's why it has to live inside the host cell and depend on the host cell's ability to make ATP. And that's why chlamydia is an obligate intracellular organism. It has to live in your cell. 
It has an elementary body that infects and a reticulous body that replicates. Mnemonic, the R with the R, the reticular replicates. But the elemental with the E enters into your cell with the E. The cell wall lacks muramic acid. How do we stain chlamydia? Game sustain. It has inclusion bodies on the inside. We treat with azithromycin, zipper mice, or doxycycline, the dog cycling. Next, we'll talk about chlamydia trachomatis in particular and its different serotypes. Chlamydia trachomatis is an obligate intracellular human pathogen that has three human serotypes which cause this disease. But today, you can think of it as the story of the great clam jam singing contest in this picmonic. Serotypes A through C, depicted by the leftmost scene above the letters A, B, and C, cause trachoma, shown by the Tacoma truck, an infection of the eyes causing follicular conjunctivitis, the convict eye with long eyelash follicles, and blindness, shown by the blind glasses. This form is most prevalent in Africa, represented by the African singers. Serotypes L1 through 3, shown in the middle podium above the letters L1 to 3, cause lymphogranuloma venerium, the lymphlime granulama, which is a sexually transmitted disease that causes buboes, the blue bow, and genital ulcers, portrayed by the genital gentleman with the volcano ulcer. Serotypes D through K, represented by the DK character, is associated with urethritis and pelvic inflammatory disease shown by the uterus and ovaries on fire. Infants that pass through the vaginal canal of women with this form during delivery can develop neonatal pneumonia, shown by the nude Mona holding the baby, which is characterized by a staccato cough. Infants can also develop neonatal conjunctivitis, shown here by the baby convict eye. So let's go over chlamydia trachomatis once again. This is caused by serotypes A to C, which leads to infections causing trachomas, follicular conjunctivitis, and blindness. This form is most prevalent in Africa. Serotypes L1 to 3 lead to lymphogranuloma venerium, buboes, and genital ulcers. Serotypes D to K cause urethritis and pelvic inflammatory disease, along with neonatal pneumonia, which is characterized by a staccato cough. This serotype also causes neonatal conjunctivitis. Chlamydia trachomatis, the truck, the Tacoma truck. On the left side, we have A through C serotypes. In the middle, we have L1 through 3. And on the right side, we have serotypes D through K. A through C, what do they cause? They cause trachoma, the Tacoma truck. Follicular conjunctivitis, blindness, and the serotype is relatively more common in Africa. L1 through 3. L is lymphogranuloma venerium, venerium from venereal disease, buboes and genital ulcers. D through K, what do they cause? They cause urethritis, they cause neonatal pneumonia with staccato cough, as well as neonatal conjunctivitis. So A through C, L1 through 3, and D through K. Next, it's time to talk about rickettsia. Rickettsial diseases are portrayed in this picmonic by the racket ball scene with rackets. These organisms are obligate intracellular organisms that require CoA and NAD+, shown by the coin A purse and nicotine cigarette character for NAD+. Rickettsial infections that cause diseases in humans include Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, shown by the spotted fever beaver on a mountain of rocks, typhus, portrayed by the typhus typhoon the beaver is looking at, as well as ehrlichiosis, the ear licking. Additionally, Q fever, portrayed by the Q queen fever beaver, is considered a rickettsial-like disease, but comes from bacteria in the Coxiella genus. All these diseases except Q fever are transmitted by arthropod vectors shown by the tick in the racquetball court, and have similar disease presentations including fever, the fever beaver in racquetball court, headache, the head egg lump, as well as a rash shown by the rash with the dermatologist examining it. These diseases also have a positive wheel felix reaction, shown by the whale on the rackets. Many of the rickettsial infections are treated by doxycycline, represented by the doxin cycling. Rickettsia, the racket, why is it intracellular? Because it depends on coenzyme A and NAD. 
and it needs you to make them. So Chlamydia needed the ATP, but Rickettsia needs the CoA and the NAD. Diseases caused by Rickettsia include Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Typhus, and Ehrlichiosis. Q fever is caused by Coxiella, not Rickettsia, but it's very closely related to Rickettsia, very similar to it. Rickettsia bacteria is usually transmitted by an arthropod, so it's an arthropod born infection. Fever is common, the fever beaver, headache, rash. We diagnose with the veal felix reaction and we treat with doxycycline, the dog cycling. Next, let's summarize all the bacteria that live intracellularly. The following picmonic was created by a student just like you. In this picmonic, we will learn about intracellular bacteria, illustrated by the story of a bacteria guy kept inside the jail. His imprisonment does not stop him from influencing his friends. Intracellular bacteria are divided into obligate intracellular and facultative intracellular. Obligate intracellular bacteria need a host cell to reproduce slash replicate and rely on host ATP. These include Coxiella, represented by a cock with a brunette wig, Rickettsia, illustrated by a racket, and Chlamydia, represented by a Chlamydia clam. The other classification of intracellular bacteria is facultative intracellular, which means they are capable of living and replicating slash reproducing either inside or outside cells. These include Brucella, represented by Bruce Lee, Neisseria, shown by a knife, Salmonella, depicted by a salmon, Legionella, illustrated by a legionnaire soldier, Francisella tularensis, represented by a French tulip seller, Yersinia pestis, shown by a ear scientist pests with plague doctor mask, Mycobacterium, illustrated by a mycobacteria character TBTV, and Listeria, depicted by a Listeria lizard with monocle. In summary, intracellular bacteria are divided into obligate intracellular and facultative intracellular bacteria. Obligate intracellular bacteria may include Coxiella, Rickettsia, and Chlamydia. On the other hand, facultative intracellular bacteria include Neisseria, Brucella, Salmonella, Legionella, Francisella tularensis, Yersinia pestis, Mycobacterium, and Listeria. So let's review. You divide the screen like this. Obligate intracellular organisms are here, but facultative intracellular bacteria are here. Obligate intracellular bacteria include Chlamydia, Rickettsia, Coxiella. How about the facultative intracellular? We have Brucella, we have Legionella, Neisseria upon Salmonella, Francisella, Yersinia, Mycobacteria, and Listeria. After you finish these picmonics, you also have quizzes to answer. Here are three questions from a quiz. Can you please pause and take a moment to try to answer these three questions and let me know your answers in the comments. When you go to Picmonic, you can create playlists based on your favorite book. They have the most recent version of First Aid, Pathoma, Master the Boards, etc. These Picmonics are organized by subject and by system. You can also create your own playlists and you can create your own Picmonics. They also give you a daily quiz to answer and they recommend a bunch of Picmonics for you to watch and study. This is how I get the most out of Picmonic. I watch the animation, then I watch the story animation next to it. I watch the animation again. I pause the video and take a look at the picture, like real close. I close my eyes and then use my imagination to put each item on its place. Oh, this organism it was on the top right. The doxycycline was on the bottom left, for example. Then I open my eyes again and see how I did. I solve all the questions in the quiz after each Picmonic. Then I get a blank piece of paper and write down the place of the characters again. I will revisit the same Picmonic on day two, on day five, and after one month. This spaced repetition helps me remember for a very long time. I can still remember vividly the details in many Picmonics that I've studied 10 years ago. If you use the link in the description box, you can try Picmonic for free. They'll also give you a discount. You can watch these Picmonics on your computer or on an app on your phone or tablet. When you use visual cues, audio, storytelling, you read a script and spaced repetition and you answer questions and you can even create your own Picmonics, that's how you remember these forever. If you want to watch the Mycoplasma Picmonic, go to picmonic.com. You'll find that link in the description box as well as in the comments. 
As we always do towards the end of each microbiology video, we summarize everything in one slide. Here is chlamydia, rickettsia, and mycoplasma. All of them are atypical bacteria. All of them are anatomically gram-negative or similar to gram-negatives, but in reality they do not stain well with gram stain. For many reasons, one of them is that mycoplasma doesn't even have a cell wall. That's why gram stain is impossible for mycoplasma. Mycoplasma does not have a cell wall. It does have a cell membrane, just like any other organism. So cell membrane, yes. Cell wall, no. Which means, if I have mycoplasma pneumonia and I am your patient and you're trying to diagnose me via gram stain, I'll have a moment with you. The whole purpose of gram stain is to stain the cell wall. But mycoplasma doesn't even have a cell wall. So why are you ordering gram stain? Moreover, if I am your patient with mycoplasma pneumonia and you try to treat me using penicillin, I'll have a second moment with you. Penicillin is a cell wall synthesis inhibitor. Why would you give me a cell wall synthesis inhibitor to treat an organism that does not have a cell wall? What are you trying to inhibit? So we're not using penicillin. We're not using any of the cell wall synthesis inhibitors. So no penicillins, no cephalosporins, no carbapenems, no monobactam, no vancomycin, no bacitracin. But yes to tetracycline and yes to erythromycin. One of the tetracyclines, by the way, is doxycycline. So as you can see, doxycycline can treat all three. Doxycycline is the hero for the atypical bacteria. Don't ever forget that. How do tetracyclines work? They are protein synthesis inhibitors. They inhibit the 30S ribosomal subunit of the bacteria. How about erythromycin? Erythromycin is a macrolide. It's another protein synthesis inhibitor, but it inhibits the 50S ribosomal subunit instead of the 30S ribosomal subunit. What are the diseases caused by mycoplasma? Mycoplasma pneumonia, which is atypical because it's not caused by pneumococci or strep pneumo, erythema multiforme with this target-like rash, and cold, i.e. IgM, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Remember that cold is IgM, but warm is IgG. And I've talked about AIHA in my hematology playlist. How can I diagnose mycoplasma? Do not say gram stain. Say culture on Eaton's agar because I want to see the mulberry colonies. PCR can be used. Next, chlamydia. Atypical. Anatomically gram negative but does not stain well with gram. It's an obligate intracellular organism. It has to live in your cell. Why? because it cannot make its own ATP, so it depends on your ability to make ATP. In order for chlamydia to enter your epithelium, it needs elementary body, but in order to replicate, it needs reticulate body. First you enter to find that doozy ATP, then you replicate. Diseases caused by chlamydia include STIs, UTIs. STIs like genital ulcers, yup, like buboes, like lymphogranuloma venereum, indeed. And UTIs like what? Urethritis, inflammation of the urethra, cystitis, inflammation of the urinary bladder, pyelonephritis, inflammation of the kidney and the renal pelvis, epididymitis, inflammation of the epididymis, etc. Pelvic inflammatory disease, atypical pneumonia and neonatal pneumonia, trachoma, follicular conjunctivitis and neonatal conjunctivitis, how can I diagnose it? Do not say gram stain, say gam stain. And on your exam, they want you to answer NAAT, nucleic acid amplification test. PCR can also work. How do I treat chlamydia? Zipermice, azithromycin, and the dog that is cycling, doxycycline. Next, rickettsia, another atypical, another anatomically gram-negative organism. It is obligate intracellular organism. Why? Because it depends on NAD and coenzyme A that you will make. Diseases caused by rickettsia include Rocky Mountain spotted fever, typhus, ehrlichiosis, and infectious vasculitis, which is the vasculitis that most, if not all, students forget. When you say vasculitis to a student, they remember, oh, like giant cell arthritis or temporal arthritis, like Takayasu arthritis, polyarthritis nodosa, etc. All of these are correct, but you cannot forget infectious vasculitis. Vasculitis triggered by an infectious organism like rickettsia. 
like disseminated meningococcemia by Neisseria meningitidis. How do I diagnose rickettsia? Do not say gram stain. Instead, say game sustain and the veil Felix reaction. You treat with the doxycycline again, and if it fails or if the patient is allergic to doxy, this is the only instance that you are allowed to use the ugly chloramphenicol. Why is it ugly? It is very toxic. It has many side effects, including gray baby syndrome, including blood discourages, white blood cell disorders, red blood cell disorders, platelet disorders. So aplastic anemia. Yes, indeed. Although aplastic anemia is not a proper term. A better term is aplastic pancytopenia because it affects everything. If you want to be an excellent student, get a sheet of paper and try to reconstruct your table from your own memory. Let's review. Chlamydia can lead to trachoma, can lead to urethritis, epididymitis, cystitis, pyelonephritis, discharge, dyspareunia, treat with doxycycline or azithromycin, and you need to treat both partners. Chlamydia trachomatis cannot make its own ATP, lacks miramic acid. Elementary bodies with an E will enter into your cell, but reticulate bodies will replicate in the cell. E with E, R with R. Stain with GIMSA to look at the inclusion bodies. You treat with azithromycin or doxycycline. Chlamydia trachomatis serotypes, A through C, trachoma, follicular conjunctivitis, and blindness. L1 through 3 serotypes, bubos, lymphogranuloma venereum, and genital ulcers. Third, serotypes D through K, you have urethritis, neonatal conjunctivitis, neonatal pneumonia with staccato cough. Rickettsia rickettsi, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Typhus, and Ehrlichiosis. Q fever is similar, but Q fever is caused by Coxiella, not Rickettsia. Rickettsia needs your coenzyme A and NAD. Diagnose with game sustain, VL Felix reaction, and treat with doxycycline. The organisms that live in your cell can be divided into obligate intracellular bacteria and facultative intracellular. The obligate intracellular include chlamydia, rickettsia, and coxiella. The facultative intracellular include brucella, salmonella, neisseria, legionella, francisella, yersinia, mycobacteria, and listeria. You can keep reading and crying over your textbook, or better, you can just use Picmonic. See how many facts you have memorized in less than a minute, and when it's time to review it, it's gonna take even less. There are more than 1,800 Picmonics available on this website, picmonic.com. Click on the link in the description. They have all kinds of bacteria available. Each one has its own Picmonic. They also have fungi, viruses, parasites, all the medications that you can imagine, genetic diseases, OBGYN, anatomy topics, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, psychology, internal medicine, statistics, and more. Whether you're studying to become a doctor, a nurse, PA, PTOT paramedic or a pharmacist, Picmonic has a solution for you. Thousands and thousands of students have downloaded this app. So go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download it today. The link is picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis and they will hook you up. Thank you Picmonic for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much guys for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. All these videos are organized in a playlist called Picmonic. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense and Picmonic where learning is really fun.